Rocket development has never been an easy task. Throughout history, the journey of creating and refining rockets has been punctuated by a series of successes and, at times, catastrophic failures. The haunting disasters, such as the Challenger and Columbia shuttle tragedies or the earlier Russian Netherlands catastrophe, showed just how risky this industry is. As hard as rocket science is, arguably the most challenging part of developing and launching a rocket lies in its engine. The engine, in many ways, is the heart of the rocket. A flaw in the engine can not only jeopardize a mission, but also risk lives. SpaceX, from its inception, adopted a different path. While most aerospace companies would typically use engines designed by companies, SpaceX opted for a more challenging yet potentially rewarding route, creating their own engines. By developing their own engines, SpaceX gained an invaluable advantage, flexibility. Instead of being constrained by the limitations of third-party engines, they could make their propulsion systems to suit the exact requirements of their missions. For example, their Merlin engines, initially used for the Falcon 1, underwent several iterations and improvements for use in the more robust Falcon 9 rockets. Then, they introduced a newer and more sophisticated engine, the famous Raptor engine. This engine is designed for prolonged space journeys, like venturing to other planets. Among the various iterations of the Raptor engine, the most advanced one, and the version that SpaceX is regularly using for the Starship tests, is the Raptor 2. Even with all the milestones SpaceX has reached with their Raptor 2 engines, they haven't been without their hurdles. The, the 20th of April Starship launch is a prime example. From the 33 engines on board, Six didn't light up during this crucial test launch. Fast forward to last week and history seemed to repeat itself during a static fire test. This time, four engines didn't kick into action. It's becoming clear that this isn't just bad luck. There's something going on with the Raptor 2 engines, but as always, SpaceX is already on the case, hinting at developing a new engine solution. Enter the Raptor Vacuum, or RAPVAC for short. It's like the Raptor's big brother, designed especially for the void of space. This engine is all about making sure spacecrafts like the Starship move smoothly, giving them the boost they need. In the past, Starships were equipped with a mix. Three standard Raptors for when they're closer to Earth, and three Raptor vacuum engines for when they're cruising in space. But it seems SpaceX has new plans up its sleeve. Now they're considering powering Starships with six Raptor vacuum engines. Size matters in propulsion technology. The Raptor vacuum's standout feature is its vast nozzle, which is integral to its function. Boasting an astounding area ratio of 200, the RAPVAC has a nozzle diameter nearing 4 meters. Such an expansion ratio is specifically designed to optimize performance in space's vacuum, providing a balance between efficiency and thrust. To provide context, the thrust of the Raptor vacuum engine surpasses that of many renowned engines in its class, including the BE-4 and RD-180. However, the magic lies in its specific impulse. With a specific impulse of 380S, the Raptor vacuum is head and shoulders above competitors in how efficiently it uses propellant. Consider the Falcon 9, which employs the Merlin engine. When we compare the two, the Merlin, despite being an engineering marvel, lags behind in specific impulse. This delta represents significant fuel savings and higher achievable speeds. One of Raptor Vacuum's groundbreaking features is its regenerative cooling system. Imagine running really fast and getting super hot. To cool down, you'd naturally want to pour cold water over yourself. The Raptor Vacuum engine does something similar, but in a more advanced way. Instead of using water, it circulates its own fuel, methane, around its parts that tend to overheat. By doing this, the engine remains cooler. When making something as powerful as a rocket engine, how it's built is super important. In the past, big rocket engines were often made by joining together lots of small tubes, but SpaceX decided to do things a bit differently with the Raptor vacuum. They use big sheets of copper wrapped in another tough material called Inconel. This way of making the engine not only makes it stronger, but also helps it work better. Another problem is when the engine pushes out gas, but the surrounding air pushes back. This is tricky because it can mess with the engine's stability. SpaceX's smart engineers have been figuring out ways to handle this problem. They want the engine's gas flow to be just right, strong enough for good thrust, but steady so the engine doesn't wobble. They've been looking into tweaking other parts of the engine too. 
like the sections that pump in fuel to make it all run smoothly. Discussing the engines, it's crucial to mention the structures that bear the brunt of their immense thrust, the launch mounts. Without adequate precautions, these foundational structures can suffer significant damage during launches or even standard fire tests. An illustrative incident was the Starship launch on April 20th. SpaceX's towering Starship embarked on its inaugural fully stacked test flight from the Starbase facility in Texas on that day. However, the real aftermath was evident on the ground. Following the liftoff, the aftermath at Starbase painted a sobering picture. The immense thrust from the 33 Raptor engines carved out a crater right under the orbital launch mount, scattering cement debris and damaging nearby structures. A notable absence at Starbase is a flame trench. This is a structure specifically designed to channel the exhaust away from the launch pad during takeoff. Such trenches are standard for pads that accommodate high-power rockets. After the 20th of April's incident, unlike traditional systems like NASA's, SpaceX has adopted a steel plate water deluge system. This system was prominently on display during a test last week, proving its efficacy. This test not only involved igniting the engines, but also involved putting the new water deluge system to the test. Lasting a mere 2.74 seconds, the ignition saw four engines shutting down earlier than expected. As the engines roared to life, water from this system was observed spraying upwards from beneath the Starship's launch mount. This test was live-streamed for enthusiasts and took place at SpaceX's renowned Starbase launch facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Musk has hinted that we might witness the second Starship launch as soon as the end of this summer. Beyond the time frame, what's caught everyone's attention is Musk's confidence in the mission's success. He estimates a robust 60% success rate for the Starship to reach orbit on this attempt. However, recent developments with the Federal Aviation Administration cast a shadow over Musk's optimism. The final accident report from the previous Starship test has yet to be submitted to the Federal Aviation Administration or FAA. Without this crucial document, the Starship program remains grounded. Given this delay, it's becoming increasingly unlikely that we'll see a second launch attempt by the end of the summer. That's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.